day, everyone. Me here. I'm not. I'm alone. I'm not with my partner. Blue has had some kind of outbreak situation and is quarantined. So, just me, chilling. Um, kind of not current, not along current events or whatever, but I thought I would take this opportunity to reiterate a, sto a story that I once told him. He was very enthusiastic about sharing it, which I thought was a cool idea. Uh, basically, the journey of um, like a pregnancy and labor and that whole thing. Um, <clears throat> it has been on my mind of late dealing with being like a mom in, during all of this like quarantine stuff, which is really tough. I only have one kid though, so it's really not like crazy crazy hard for me. I have a lot of people in my life that support me, so I don't you know, want to be like complaining or anything. That's absolutely not what's going on here. But but it has been on my mind how hard it's been for, for families to deal with everything that's been going on. <clears throat> so I thought I'd share the story of my pregnancy, which was a relatively easy one. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any crazy like, you know, weird health stuff or anything like that. Um, but just the feeling that goes with your first very scary kid, you know, it's, it's like a really fucking scary thing. I can't imagine how awful it would be to do it alone. So anyone out there who has done that or is going through that, hit me up in the comments because that is tough. That's awful. <coughs> Having a spouse and parents and parent-in-laws and all that crap really, really does uh, take a lot of the burden. Um, but the, the internal burden stuff, no one can really kind of help with that. So it's a lot of feelings and hormones that cause more feelings and your sympathetic nervous system just going wild. Um, so, so, like, first, I guess, trimester, the first three months are not that bad. It's more of excitement and, like, you know, the adrenaline of, like, holy crap, all this stuff, and you're telling people and blah, 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 it's very exciting, whatever, but sort of closer to the end, or the beginning, I should say, it, you, it gets really scary, kind of, and, like, you're preparing, and your body's preparing, and, you know, you've got special rooms and nurseries and equipment, and everybody's bringing you crap and furniture and clothes and all that crap, so it's not, like, scary in that way that you're unprepared. There's a little bit of that, obviously, <clears throat> but it's mostly... The, like, mounting anticipation of this, like, traumatic event of, I don't want to sound, like, super morbid, but of kind of being ripped open from the outside. I mean, it's a very, it's a very terrifying thought. Um, but I do find myself often telling people, <coughs> specifically women who have never, like, had kids or anything, that... It's actually not as bad as you would think. I can remember being like 18 or 19 and knowing women that were pregnant and being like, oh, holy shit, how do you deal with that? That's crazy. I would never do that. You're nuts. You know, your your body's going to be torn apart. When you're actually like in the midst of it, it. None of that stuff is really all that terrifying, which is why it's so confusing. I think there's certain brain chemicals and hormones that kind of make it more bearable, fear-wise, when you're actually, like, doing it. But it's like a, it's a traumatic thing. It's a traumatic event. It's a trauma for, um, for your body and for your mind to go through that kind of experience because you don't know what the hell's going to happen. Anything could happen. You hear those crazy stories all the time about, like, emergency C-sections and stuff, and that just, ah! It's very, very scary. <clears throat> so there's the fear of the unknown, obviously. But the, the, the trauma of the thing, you know? I mean, like, 
we all saw the movie in sixth grade or whatever, the video, it's not good. It's not great. And it's, you know, it's a very uh, daunting kind of task, which you have no choice in the matter at that time, by then, because what are you going to do, you know? I mean, you can't keep it in there. <laughs> it's so fucking scary and awful. Oh, my gosh. And it's, I think it's a trauma for the infant, too, for the newborn. I think it's a trauma to be maybe not completely self-aware, which we don't fully know, by the way, but, like, can you imagine a little self-aware, tiny little person, like, smushed and squeezed in there, and the muscles and the bones and everything is just, like, just smushing that thing out a tiny hole. That probably sucks too, right? That probably sucks just as much as it sucked for me to do it. So it's a it's a very weird, weird experience and very daunting. Um, I will say, however, that when I was at the hospital, there was this one nurse who was amazing, and I wish that I knew like her info and her name. I don't think I could have done it. Like, this chick was like a guardian angel. Like, it was... I can't ex- I can't explain it. I can't describe it. Someone just walks into a room that you've never seen before in your entire life and is just... Like, all... I don't know. It's like it's your best friend and your mom and, like, Jesus all just, like, taking care of you all at the same time. It's in one person. Like, it's, it's the craziest thing. Like, those people are amazing, and anyone that goes into that profession, I guess I can understand why, but getting, getting the epidural is really scary, they have to, like, do the, the, you know, the spinal thing, and you can't move, like, at all, and she just, like, you, you have to hunch over, kind of, a little bit, like, on the side of the bed, and she was, like, holding me, and just, like, pep-talking me through this thing, like, it was, it was amazing, like, it was, it was crazy, I don't even know you, and you just saved my life, basically. Like, it was so weird. It was such a weird feeling. <clears throat> so kudos, 100%, to, uh, you know, doctors, but also fucking nurses. Like, hell yeah, nurses. Hell yeah. It was, it was amazing. I know, I wish I knew what her name was. I can't remember what it was. was oh, is that terrible? Oh, I should probably send her, like, I should probably send her a card or some shit. Like a gift card? I don't know. Damn it. Whoops. Missed opportunity. Give that chick a raise, I guess. I don't know. Three years ago? Four years ago at Fairview Hospital? Somebody? (laughs) Oh, man, I'm such a dick. And the doctor, or the midwife chick that was there was really cool, too. She was... I went, I I saw a group of, like, three or four midwives that were all, like, kind of took turns on different schedules or whatever, so this chick who I'd seen before, but she just said happened to be working that night at one o'clock in the morning or whatever, (coughs) was this, like, sassy, super sassy black chick, and she was hilarious and just doing the thing where they talk about other crap to distract you, like a little kid getting a shot or whatever, like it was pretty funny. So there was some larfs. There was a little bit of larfs. It was cool. Um, and then, oh, and they don't let you film anymore, which is kind of weird and stupid because it's like, it's my vagina, so if I'm cool with it, then why would you care? I don't know. Lawsuits like this? I don't know. I wonder what kind of lawsuit came out of that. And my husband um, actually caught the baby, delivered it technically, which is kind of weird. That was a weird moment that I kind of wasn't really present for, so it's cool. (laughs) I was like out, I was like not even, I don't, I was not there enough to care. I probably now would have been like, don't do that, but, (laughs) but uh, at the moment, I had other crap to do, so that was fine, and it it seems, it seems to be okay, I guess, so, (laughs) which was crazy, and I 
didn't we have any kind of like C-section or crazy stuff? Um, a few stitches. Mm. Uh, but at that point, you just can't feel anything. Even like the entire rest of your body, just from the adrenaline and all the endorphins and stuff. They give you this weird, like, spray lidocaine crap to, like, spray your junk with for a few days after. That was weird. But you it, because it's awesome. I don't know. It's just a, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy traumatic experience, and I don't think enough people really talk about it. Not that I wouldn't have done it, or I won't do, or that I won't do it again. I think I would probably do it again, but... It's a lot of good that comes from a super intense, traumatic experience, you know? It's fucking crazy. It's a crazy thing that the human body can do that. And then when you throw on top of the fact that any number of things could have went wrong and turned it into, like, a ten times, hundred times, you know, more medical emergency type of situation, that that happens all the fucking time... That, that makes it even crazier to think about that, that people go through that stuff. So if you're a mom and you out there and you're quarantining or staying at home or whatever, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what I would say. I'm sick of the stupid self-care memes. Like, go fuck yourself. Who has time for that? But if you can, get a moment to self-love. Do that shit. Get a vibrator, get a wine, get whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do. Alone. Go sit in the car and just be alone if that's what you need for 10 minutes. But if you can do anything to do that's just for you, just for yourself, do it. Do it for sure. Because I will tell you right now, if my mom came over here right now and was like, I feel like shit, like I wouldn't. I would have wanted her to do something for herself. I would right now, I would today, and I would, you know, 30 years ago. I'd be like, well, whatever, just go take care of you. So that's what I'm saying to all the mommies out there today is the same thing I would say to my mommy 30 years ago. It's like, I'm good, I'm just watching cereal, watching TV, eating cereal, watching TV. You go do what you need to do. It's important, and it's probably a favor on the part of the kids anyways to keep us all sane. So, yeah. Love all those babies. Love all those miracles. But also, save some of that love for yourself. Happy momming!